Portions of this video are brought to you by Aura Ring. Hey everyone, I'm Michael Josh, and you're watching Gadget Match. I'm back from WWDC, and over the last few days, I've done the brave thing, and I've installed the beta for iOS 16 on my main phone. I'm talking about the next operating system that will run on upcoming iPhones. And while it doesn't come till this fall, I'm here to talk about some of my favorite new features that you should be excited about. Let me start with my favorite one. iMessage users are going to love the ability to edit messages or unsend them. I'm sure we've all sent someone a message that was meant for someone else, or one with an embarrassing typo. Now all you have to do is tap and hold on a message and you get this menu. From here, you can choose to edit your message. There, much better. Or you can just unsend it completely. You only have 15 minutes from sending that message to decide if you want to unsend or edit that message. And the person on the receiving end will see that you have edited that message. Also, that person will need to be running the latest versions of macOS, iOS, and watchOS across all their devices. The iPhone lock screen is getting more personal and useful. From the lock screen, you can now press and hold to customize. If you have a photo selected as your wallpaper, for example, you can swipe to change filter styles or colors. And if it's a portrait photo, like in this example, you can make it black or white, or even give it a color backdrop. Tapping on elements lets you customize those as well. So you can change the font and colors of your clock. Oh, and this also works with portraits of your pets. But what I'm most excited about is the ability to add widgets to your lock screen, like the temperature, your activity rings, or say, a calendar widget. For now, these are only Apple widgets, but Apple is allowing third-party developers to also design their own lock screen widgets. And I expect many to be available when iOS 16 rolls out this fall. You're not just limited to photos, though. There's a new wallpaper gallery with tons of options. Some of my favorites include emoji, which lets you select up to six of your favorite emojis arranged in some cool pattern, photo shuffle, which shuffles through a set of your curated photos throughout the day, weather shows live weather conditions, so your lock screen will turn rainy, for example, if it's stormy out, and astronomy, which gives you this view of the Earth, with live cloud conditions. A nice nod to one of the iPhone's original wallpapers. Notice too that notifications now roll in from the bottom of the screen instead of the top, so they don't cover that wallpaper photo when you have a lot of them. You can also swipe down to hide them so your lock screen stays clean. I also like that you can now track the location of your Uber ride from the lock screen so you don't have to have the app open while you're waiting for your car. And how when you're listening to music, you can see the album art alongside controls in full screen view. Since the feature was launched last year, I've been a big fan of Focus which is basically do not disturb with more granular controls that change based on context. Currently, you can restrict who can text you when, say, you're at work, or what apps can send you notifications during these times. In iOS 16, focus mode features are expanding. You can set a different lock screen for different focus modes, and this applies to what's on your Apple Watch as well. But more importantly, it's a feature called focus filters. So whether you're on Safari or messages or checking emails or looking at your calendar, you can filter out non-work stuff when you don't want to be distracted by them. Speaking of iPhones, ever since last year's September iPhone event, I've been caught wearing this ring, and some eagle-eyed viewers have been asking, am I engaged? Well, nope, I'm not. I'm very much single. This ring is the Aura Ring, and the simplest way to describe it is a smart ring. It measures the quality of my sleep, takes vitals like my temperature, heart rate, and heart rate variability. Not only does it know what optimal vitals look like, it also knows what my baseline vitals are, so much so that if there's a sudden change, it could be an indicator that I might be getting sick. That's why some NBA teams use the Aura Ring as a means to predict COVID infections. In the last year, I've used the Aura Ring to help improve my sleep by understanding how different factors affect the quality of my sleep and then making those changes. I wear it here on my left middle finger because it's most comfortable here. 
Now see here, when I started, how bad my sleep scores were. With proper habits, I was able to get them up, sometimes with scores in the 90s. Beyond that, what I love the most is that it gives me a readiness score before each day, based on the quality of my sleep, how stressed I am, and how much activity I engaged in the day before. Some days it will tell me to pay attention and ease up, give myself a break, or on other days, to keep going. At the height of my fitness journey, I wore all sorts of devices and sensors, but now I'm glad I don't need to wear anything on my wrist. Just this tiny device on my finger. Aura Ring Gen 3 starts at $299 and comes in silver, black, stealth, and gold. There's also a fancy Gucci collab, which is $950. When you order, they'll send you a sizing kit first before they send you the actual ring. It also comes with a six month free membership, which provides even more insight. For more info, visit AuraRing.com. That's O-U-R-A ring.com. I love my Aura Ring and you will too. I love live text on the iPhone. It allows me to copy text from a photo or Safari, or from that photo, text a number or send an email. Now Apple is expanding live text to include videos. So soon, you'll be able to pause a video you're watching and copy the text on the screen. You can also translate or convert currency too. Another feature that I've enjoyed playing with is called Visual Lookup. So apart from being able to have your iPhone identify the breed of a dog in a photo, you can also tap on the dog and have it immediately cut out from its background to use as a sticker. I've played around with this so much over the last few days and it's really so easy to be able to just cut out an object from a photo and it doesn't even have to be a photo that you shot with your iPhone. Can you believe it's been 10 years since Apple launched Apple Maps? And while back then, it was a far cry away from the industry leader Google Maps, today, it's a must try. Now in iOS 16 is a new and improved city experience view with a whole new way of seeing maps in 3D. And they really come alive with day and night views. Multi-stop routing lets you plan 15 stops in advance. So if you're on a road trip, you could say, plan your trip on your computer and easily send that info to your iPhone. And transit now lets you see the cost of your trip and even reload your transit card all without leaving maps. Being able to dictate long emails and text messages is now even easier. You can now use both dictation and your keyboard at the same time and switch between the two. So you can stop dictating and then switch to your keyboard. Dictation can also automatically enter punctuations and you can also dictate emojis just like on the circle. Hashtag subscribe to this channel, heart eyes emoji, thumbs up emoji, and praying hands emoji. I'm about to go on a holiday with my entire family and because all of them are iPhone users, it would be cool if this new feature was already rolled out. It's called iCloud Shared Photo Library and it lets everyone easily contribute to a library. You can share photos manually or automatically as long as other family members are nearby. In the camera app, there's also a switch that automatically lets you share photos to a shared library as soon as you take them. Although that could potentially be dangerous. Now, speaking of sharing, Apple is also expanding SharePlay, a relatively new feature that lets you watch movies and listen to music together. Apart from being able to play games and use other apps together over a FaceTime call, you can now do this directly from an app like Messages. I like how from one app, Wallet, I can see my credit cards, my transit cards, my Broadway tickets, plane boarding passes, even my Vax card. And I can't wait for the new state IDs to roll out here in New York. After announcing it last year, some states now offer this digital version of the state ID and TSA and some US airports now accept it. But more exciting this year is a feature called Apple Pay Later, which lets you pay for things over time and without interest. So for example, you have a big purchase coming up. As long as you use Apple Pay, you'll be able to split it into four equal monthly payments with no interest and zero fees. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know 
I'm a big proponent of closing your rings because it really just encourages people to be more active. But of course, closing your rings requires that you have an Apple Watch. Well, not anymore. Your iPhone now lets you set your personal move goals. Using motion sensors on your iPhone, you can now track your steps, distance, and flights climbed without an Apple Watch and get an estimate of calories burned. More importantly, you get a move ring which you can close every day. While rumors of an Apple car never seem to die down, Apple's next generation CarPlay gives us a sneak peek into what that experience might be like. Providing immersive content that stretches across all of a driver's screens, regardless of the screen layout they have. Widgets powered by your iPhone will contain information and controls. I love this one that integrates Apple Maps to the screen directly behind their steering wheel so you don't have to look off to the side. And those were just some of my favorite new features on iOS 16. If you'd like to be brave like me and give the beta a try, the public beta is rolling out sometime in July. <laughs> iOS 16 supports all of these models that you see on screen. You could also be patient and wait for the update that comes along with the announcement of new iPhones, which is most likely going to happen this September. At this year's WWDC, Apple also announced the new version of macOS called Ventura, and I'm also working on a separate video. So to make sure you don't miss that video and many like it, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we publish new videos. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.